Greetings everyone, this is Sizzle466 and EK from Team One Trick here. How you doing, EK? Well, living the dream, my dude. I'm glad we're back this week. We didn't take a week off last week for Reno Mage, so yeah. So this glad is, we're back. Yeah, so this is episode three of our Reno Mage series, and today we want to talk about how to build specialist lineups. Um, so EK has brought a Reno Mage lineup, I've brought a Reno Priest lineup, and we're going to play a game against each other just to give you an idea of what a specialist match um, might look like. So EK, you want to tell us um, the reasoning behind your lineup that you've brought? So I decided to do Reno Mage because I think Reno Mage is open season in terms of like deck building possibilities and like directions that you can go and everything like that. I just, I, I like the challenge that it brings because there's so many, like so many cards that you could potentially play. So the uh, the particular version that I chose to do was a uh, Nizoth version because I think the Nizoth version can hedge both towards anti-aggro and anti-control a little bit easier than an elemental version. Yeah, and we, we should also mention for those of you who aren't familiar with specialist mode, um, it's a new tournament mode being introduced by Blizzard where your main deck has 25 core cards, which ha which have to be in all three of your lists. And then your secondary and your tertiary list can have five cards differing from the primary list. And they don't have to be the same cards from the original list either. As long as you're only subbing out up to five cards. That's right. Anything is fair game. Mm -hmm. So I've subbed out different cards in my two other lists. Um, and in some cases, I actually haven't even subbed out a full five cards. Um, and that's because my original list, I hedged kind of as like an in-between because, you know, being a, arguably a one deck format, like a one archetype format, you need to be able to bring something that can handle different things. And with a deck as diverse as like Reno Mage, like Reno, even like Reno Priest, Reno Lock, and, so, you know, like any of those Highlander decks, there's only so much room you have to work with. So you kind of have to hedge a little bit in your initial list to make had you know going anti control or anti combo or anti aggro a little bit easier. So you're gonna sacrifice like a percentage or two, like you know when you're hard targeting something. But overall, across the entire field, I think you're gonna be a little bit more stable that way. Yeah. So when I when I look at your primary list, it looks like the pretty normal looking you know element 91 reno mage it's got uh, this is this is this is the ek bat special this oh, is the, the ek Nizoth. bat special my apologies yeah. um yeah no you're good you're good but it looks yeah it, but you know we have it looks like we have the big priest tech we've got a we've got a ooze in there for those dirty rogues and alaneth mages bgh for the shamans um when but then when we move over to the anti-aggro list um i can see you've got a galaka crawler now to deal with um the rogues the some odd paladins are still running pirates um yeah and i uh and i'm realizing this right now i uh i cut one of the oozes i should have a set i should want to have a second ooze in there if i'm targeting aggro because all yeah. the aggro decks right now are weapon decks so i might you know depending on how testing goes i might you know swap in another ooze instead of like the twilight flame caller or something like yeah. that yeah and when when you say ooze you mean acidic swamp ooze not yeah the, not, the not, a, not, a, not a second golden ooze um, it, like i, I like I mean, maybe i mean yeah. you'll just draw it anyway right yeah i mean the fun thing about the specialist lineup the specialist format is you could actually bring one reno mage and two non reno mages they don't, yeah. have, they don't have to be all reno decks yeah um, and there, there's been talked with like people playing odd warrior but like you know, in a particular matchup, they, you know, for one of their decks, they might take Baku out and put in Executes and Dirty Rats and Dead Man's Hand. Mm-hmm. That's it's a really interesting format. Yeah, so you can you can completely change your archetype if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, I really like the Twilight Flame Caller um, in the anti aggro list. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of potential for paladin and rogue and just at, like a lot of different low to the ground decks that I think you just you need that extra little bit of sandpaper to yeah. be able to deal with. Yeah. And that, this was one of the ideas that I wanted that I've been testing and have been wanting to test yeah. in an anti aggro situation. Yeah, and for the anti control list, it looks like we've got the, um, we still have the dirty rat. Right? Obviously, we don't need the glacial shard anymore. 
that's more no. of an anti-aggro tool. Yeah. Um, we've got a duplicate in there, which I really like. Um, that's definitely a greed card, uh, which yeah. can help you out a lot. Yeah. Um, anything else? I, I, I interesting. Go- the interesting thing of note is I did leave the Doctor Boom in the anti-control list as opposed to a Sundragosa. Because there, there does come a point where you do want to be able to put pressure and stuff like that, and you know, say like, "Hey, I don't need value. I need to start forcing my opponent to make some decisions." And Doctor Boom puts a lot of like board tension and board pressure out there with the Boom bots. And nothing is more satisfying than those Boom bots killing your opponent when they have their own ice block up during their turn. That's yeah. always one of my favorite things with the Boom bots. And the, I mean, it. it Functions the same way as Sindragosa does as well, in that you can turn the boom bots into water elementals. But it mm-hmm. gives you that extra little bit of board control that you might need potentially. Yeah. And especially in an anti control matchup, you may not even have the hand size to get those legendaries. So maybe a lot Exa- of the time, exactly. the, the boom like bots when you're, might when be you're running when you're running stuff like duplicate and Malacras and you know, Brand Zola kind of combo shenanigans, you, you you're going to be running a full hand a lot of the time, so... For sure. Okay, so this looks like a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to share with you um, the thoughts behind my Reno Priest Specialist lineup. So this one I this one went through a, quite a few iterations to try and get it right. Um, yeah, you, had a, you had a couple of people look at this, too. Yeah, um, so I, I had Memnock look at this. Um, I had you look at it as well. I, I put the initial idea to go the route that you did. Yeah, so I, yeah. Take, I take credit for that. Yes, yes definitely. So, so basically, um, the way I... So for this final iteration, um, my step one was to go to EK's wonderful Reno Priest Guide, which he made for Team One Trick. Um, if you missed that video, the link is in the description below. Um, but one great thing about the video by EK is he has a sec. He has he broke it up into sections where you've got your core cards, and then you've got your tech cards based on the packages you want to run in your Reno Priest list. So I went through that, and I was talking with Memnark and EK and a few others. Um, I kind of figured out what are the twenty five core cards I want to have in this list, and I went for the dragon direction. So these are all dragon Reno Priest builds, but they've all got. Um, a slight variance in their matchups. So the primary list um, is basically your um, everyday um, just good value dragon Reno Priest list. You've, it's got the Alex Strauser in there. It's got the primordial Drake to deal with the aggro and it's even it's nice to have the 4-8 body. Um, and then the secondary deck is the anti-aggro one. So in this one um, we don't need, you know, we don't need cards like Alex Straza. Um, Primordial Drake is usually a bit too clunky. And so this is more just about getting to a point where your opponent just, you run it, your opponent out of resources and they just can't deal with your board. Uh, you, you've also added an extra removal compared to the originals because you have like a Shadow Word Horror and, um, and, a and you, added, you added in a Doomsayer as well. Yeah, and a Gluttonous Ooze. For the for the weapons, um, I actually really because Shadow Word Horror is not a very normal Reno Priest card. Um, it but, used to be, but not now. Yeah, not anymore. Um, but I re- I really like having it in there. Um, also, it would take a. You, I mean, deck lists are open for these events, but it's definitely a card that your opponent may not necessarily play around. Yeah. Um, and then the anti aggro, the anti sorry, the anti control list is just a pure greed fest. <laughs> I mean, is, is it though? <laughs> I mean, you got a mind control in there. You've got. I mean, so the, like as as a greedy player myself, really the only like greedy cards that I see are like the infinite combo, the mind control, and the Benedictus. Mm. And then you have a you have a Geist in case you steal out of Druid. Yeah, one thing I should mention, and um, I crafted this card after making this lineup. Uh, Nexus Champion Sarad could have been in this list. But I, I, I would have definitely put it yes, in that list. Uh, when I, I didn't own the card at the time, but I'm, as, I'm, as I'm making these lists, but that would be an excellent card. As yeah. well as, um, actually, I don't own, don't be mad at me, EK, I don't own Confessor Paltris. Hey, it's okay I that don't, you don't own my yes, favorite card in the game. Yeah, so I don't own that card, um, but that would also be an excellent card for the anti-control. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. Yeah. 
Because you're you're building value as well as a board. Yeah. So you're forcing your opponent to do two things. You're forcing your opponent to play the value game with you and answer the you know, the board that you're creating with premium removal that you only have so much of. For sure. At the same time. So it, it's a, it's a double edged sword. Or sorry, not a double edged sword, because there's no bad there's no downside about that. It's a double threat, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um so we we, yeah, we, we have all the deck codes in the description if you want to try them out. Um, so again, for this for the specialist format, um, um, Blizzard is going to be running them as best of threes. Um, so best of threes with no bans. Um, now, EK and I would do a best of three, but I don't think you guys want to have a three to four hour video um, because, <laughs> because we're both playing Reno decks. So we're just going to play um, our anti-control lists against each other um, and hopefully have and some the fun. Reasoning, the reason being... So you play game one, everyone has to play game one with their primary list, that right? Is, yeah, that's correct. We will inevitably just, after game one, we're, we, we both switch to our anti-control list, just without a doubt. Yeah. Although, so, someone like Sliz actually does have decisions to be made because running a card like Alex Straza in the primary list can pull a fast one on some control lists. That is true. Dep like, depending on the matchup, um, you know, because the dragon build is essentially, like, it's very inherently board-driven. If you're able to, you know, build and stick a board and then drop Alex, you're able to push for a ton of damage. And that might be something worth considering. So. Okay. So, interesting. I think I know what I'm, I think I know what I'm mulliganed for. I think I need that Razer and Anduin guy. I heard they're pretty, I, I heard I they're heard pretty that good. Those are good. Yeah, I just want those cards. <laughs> I don't care about the rest. I have a, I, I have a very greedy decision that I could do. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do it because they. So there's greed, and then there's too greedy, <laughs> to the point where you kind of mess up. Um, Blessings to you. Kind of mess your game up a little bit. Oh boy, never. <laughs> So this doesn't, is gonna be a fun, doesn't this even is gonna, this greet, is gonna be a fun one. Can you believe this guy YouTube? He doesn't even greet me back when I when I greet him. It's unbelievable. Hello. There you go. What are you talking about? <laughs> I I greeted you. I'll show them. I'll okay. So if I'm a good player, I have Slizzle's list open on my other monitor, so I'm looking at it and I'm tracking the different things that he's had going on. I would be doing that as well, except that I only have two monitors. So unfortunately, EK has the advantage here. Uh, but you, you, I mean, if you have like a deck tracker, you can enable the extension that tracks your opponent's list as well. I just, I want to see the list as a whole on like a macro level while I'm ah. like hand tracking you. I didn't even know you could As do well that. as seeing like what cards have come up as well. Now, for your secrets, I know I know you've got a duplicate and an ice block in your deck, and a potion of polymorph, and a yes. potion of polymorph. I believe those are your three. Yeah, and in terms of in t a little Reno Mage tidbit, when you're running more than two secrets, you can can start considering running a card like um, like Arcanologist at that point. Hmm. So I know that you're not running any weapons. So I feel fine playing out this ooze. I respect that. And you have 10 cards in your hand, so you have to start yeah, doing that's something. Ten, yeah, and, that, yeah I'm forced, and obviously uh, my coin is too valuable. There's no yeah, because you want to be able to coin out your Anduin yeah, yeah, as no soon as possible. Yeah, there's no way I throw that away. Um, yeah. um, I think I just do this. Yeah, sure. I don't want to pop that. I don't, I, I don't really care about the scientist. It's no. Not, it's not bothering me. I have no time for games. So I'm on the read that your hand is a little situational. So I force out, I, I force Lizzle to do something here. So yeah. I'll so take it, I'll take there's it. There's the Entomb. I'll take it. Yeah. It's a good card. Kind of kind of figured you would. And that is that is perfectly fine. Okay, we um, get to have some fun with this game. So you're not running any one mana cards, right? No, you, you no, should know that. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, 
the Geist is useless. And, th and that's one of the nice things about Mage, they, <clears throat> Arena Mage, they usually don't run one mana cards yeah, unless yeah. they're running the combo version. Yeah, so I'm just gonna throw this puppy. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Because <laughs> it kills my own cards too. That would be yes. bad. That would be very bad. Um, yeah, and that oh. and in a matchup like this, fatigue is relevant. Although you do have um, you do have Benedictus, so not really. And we're both running the infinite combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it really comes down to: Do you value Potion of Madness and Power Word Shield? What? I kind of don't in this matchup. That's the thing. That's I. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing too, actually. Yeah. So I think you're fine playing that out. Now the, it, so the interesting thing in in this matchup as well, so Sliz, Sliz is running Benedictus and the infinite combo. It means while I am fatigue proof, he's not only is Slizzle fatigue proof, but he's also fatigue proofing him with my deck as well. So he's going to get a little bit of extra value. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, for those of you who can see my hand, it was very good what just happened with that Geist. Obviously, we don't want to give too much away to EK. I, I I knew you blew a card up. You would have you would have overdrawn. Mm. Okay. Um. This is uh this is a game. I think I'm gonna do this. I wonder. No, I need I need that. No, I don't want to do that. That'd be bad. I'll do this. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 actually probably one of the best cards in your deck. Mm. Funnily enough, and my deck my deck is just straight like greed incarnate. All right, so that very well could be. I, I have a couple of things I have to play around here. So I have to be. I actually have to be careful here. Now, obviously, I don't know what's in EK's hand. EK could have secrets in his hand, which will help him with this decision. Um, okay, so we. Play so that's there. block or duplicate. Okay. So that's a uh, that is confirmed to be a nice block. Yeah, that now, helps. Now you, know, now you know. Exactly. It does buy me. It does help me a lot, though. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. And that's one less. That's one less thing in this situation that I have to worry about because now I don't have. Now I know what the randomly generated card is. All right, that is. That's okay. Okay, so now I'm in an interesting spot. So now I get to do the testing game. Yeah. Um, so I know that that you've got duplicate, ice block, or potion of polymorph. Mm-hmm. Um, you play you play around all three of those quite differently. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this is quite the pickle. I'm going to hope that this is a uh, duplicate. Thank goodness. Okay, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I would be too. It certainly could be worse. Because <clears throat> a, lo a lot of the cards in my deck, like, I really don't want them to get po Potion of Polymorphed. Just, no, they, you... They just get so much value off them. Yeah, the... the, the, the... The big thing is like you don't you're not running like death rattles or like persistent effects or anything like that. all of your stuff is battle cry based, so you will still get battle cries. What to do? What to... So the big thing that you have to be careful I wouldn't even say like be careful about I had the opportunity, so I had the opportunity to magnet magnetize and make a big tall guy, but I haven't seen your shadow or death yet, so uh, that would have just. That's, that's a very good point. 
Yeah. And I've seen your pain and I've seen your Dragonfire potions. The only thing that I have to worry about is Excavate Evil, which doesn't deal with this board. Mass Hysteria, which if you're Mass Hysteriaing two additional Zilliaxes that I didn't start with, then I'm getting out ahead. Because I'm trading two extra cards for one card in your deck. Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of value versus value matchups come down to how efficiently can you force your opponent to use their removal and their their finite resources. Yeah, yeah. So if I can trade my additional resources for your original resources, I'm coming out ahead. For sure. So my mass has to, if I if I play the mass hysteria, I clear because one's going to attack and then. And then, the other. They, yeah. And, yeah, then they, yeah, then they yeah. both hit each other. That's what I thought. Okay, let's just go ahead. May as well. Yeah. But again, I'm happy. I've seen, t I've seen two of your AoEs. Yeah. Which means that as the game goes longer, you're going to have less and less ways of dealing with something like a Nazoth. Mm. I mean, I, w I wasn't happy about that, but... I can't afford to take six damage to the face. No. I mean, you do have Ice Block, you do have Reno, but it re for you, Renoing this early is really tough because even though even though Priest has, like, Priest is the healing class, it doesn't even do that much healing. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, really happy that. seeing that. We're fine seeing that too. Okay. That's a little trickier to deal with, but we can we can deal with that. Okay. No, I don't. I don't want to do that. I have a very interesting next turn. I can imagine. <laughs> oh, hello. That's a card. Um, poker face, by the way. Um, hmm. What is in Moon's rib? Got a slimer down. I have no time for games. Sure. One thing I can also think about is I know that we're both running the infinite combo. So if I throw out a piece of my combo, I could get lucky and get it back with Benedictus. Yeah, you you definitely could. Mm. <laughs> Here's the big debate: Is do, I, I pronounce it a Asia Drake? But I've some people, but some people Azure. pronounce it. I've heard people yeah. pronounce it as Drake or Azure Drake. Oh. I think I think it depends on you know where you're from. Yeah, yeah. So, ooh, interesting. I have, I have a lot of like interesting decisions that have to be made this game because I know you have cards like um, like Dirty Rat and Benedictus. You know, do I use a resource now? Do I use it later? Do I try and get it ratted? There you go. I just I wanna I wanna I wanna be threatening, but you know not too much. But yeah. I think having a board helps. I'm also, yeah, yeah. You, like like I said earlier, you, the dragon builds tend to be a little bit more board based. Mm -hmm. So also kind of waiting for that Raza guy to show up. Kind of miss him. Yeah, I mean, you haven't gotten Raza or Anduin, I haven't gotten Jaina, so it's a fair fight. Yeah, yeah. What to do? What to do? But like, as soon as Jaina comes down, I'm on a clock. It gets really scary. Yeah. I feel a flame strike coming. Okay. I, I can play I can play for board a little bit myself. 
Hmm. The the second like you get you get and even just getting Anduin alone really helps you. Because your your deck kind of turns on at that point and kind of starts doing what it's what it wants to do. Uh, there's that's a Kazakus. He is a Kazakus. So if I were if I were Slizzard, I'm looking for something to deal with with a Nizoth board at some point. Because Nizoth, if, if Sliz doesn't have a way to deal with Nizoth, he's kind of SOL. So he needs that 10 mana poly potion or like the six AOE. Because a lot of my, a lot of my death rattles aren't exactly like you know big ticket death rattles or anything like that. Like I still am just running like the taunt package and everything like that. So. Okay. I had to make no comment on that potion. <laughs> That's a very critical potion. Yeah. No, it very much is a critical potion. And I'd make that trade there because I don't want Slizzle to... Um, to potentially Zola or... Um, do anything of the likes to that Kazakus. It's a little too important. It's about time, buddy. Yeah, there you go. There he is. That'll that'll certainly help you. Now you just you need the other piece of the puzzle. Yeah, he he'd be nice. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I want to trade. So I get to do a little bit of my own. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So we're both, it looks like we're both protecting our infinite combos pretty hard here. Assuming that you have pieces in your hand. I, I have some tricks up my sleeve. Because I, I can play a little bit looser on some of my minions because I know I've seen some of your AoE and you've had opportunities to use it. I think um, I'm going to take a small risk here, and I think... Do I do it? What is a loony's whim? Mm. I changed my mind. I will not. I'll just do this. Sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. <clears throat> um, so... Now, now I know. Um, so there's no more. There's no more Kazakuses this game, unless Sliz started with Kazakus in its ha in his hand, and I know he didn't. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't run um, Malakras because I'm a priest. But like, say, say you, you know, what if you get Malakras from um, from Benedictus? Oh, you know, I, I see. Those I are, see, those I are see, the I kinds see. of things that I have to be thinking about. Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, I had a very good top deck, by the way. Um, oh dear. That's probably the best card in my deck that I could have gotten, not gonna lie. Okay, so this is bad. So, yeah. it's, so, so YouTube, see this card I'm pointing at? That's the <laughs> card I want to combo with this one here, um, which I don't have. Um, I think I am going to have to do this now. Oh, I know what you're doing. I know. I. Yeah. I think it's got to be. It's now or never. Yeah. Sure. You just. You need to get something going. Okay. So now, and me tracking. Me tracking my deck. I know what Slizzle has put into his deck. Okay. So then I'm just gonna keep playing. Yeah, now it's the elemental game. Yep. Now this is this is where my oh, my deck Oh, finally! Starts. That's what I wanted. Let's have some fun. Are you ready, friend? Yeah. This better work. Oh. Oh, this changes everything. Hmm. Yeah. 
Um. Ooh. Certain certainly helps you. Mm-hmm. I think through this one. I yeah, so Slice has Slice has decisions here yeah, because he has to go ahead and pass. He, He's 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 kind of behind. Yeah. But I'm really happy that Zol is out though. But I, I I haven't been hand tracking, and so I don't know if Zola was in your opening hand. Let's dash that away. Oh dear. Yeah. So I even if he even if he like you know to that I can still like. You know, that's one of the cool things with um, with Malachrass. If you have something like Baleful Banker in your opening hand, you can go infinite with just the Banker and the Malachrass alone while generating extra cards. Mm -hmm. So even even if Sliz got rid of like the the Brand Zola Banker infinite combo, I still have other ways to fatigue proof my deck. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, well, this unfortunately forces me to do this, which I'm not super happy about. I don't want to do it. Oh dear. And if you do that, if you do that one thing, then it makes me you want to do another thing, and then you have the answer for it right back. Like, it's it's a never-ending chess game. These like value matchups. I love these matchups. Mm. Okay. Okay. This feels especially bad because now, you, like now, you've given me um, water elemental targets. I have. But another thing that I want to be careful about is actually um, something like Psychic Stream because I don't want to put a bunch of sheep into my deck. So it's a, it's another thing that I have to be, you know, I have, I have to keep in the back of my mind. Like, is this something that I, you know, I want to care about? And so he used the potion there. He didn't scream. Although that's not a board that you would want to scream either. So, and I missed one damage there. Oh yeah, yeah. So, chat, let me tell me in the comments. Hey, you missed one damage. You know, because <laughs> uh, don't worry, I heard you. I, I don't know what the YouTube equivalent of Dan's game is, but if you guys know what it yeah. is, you let us know. Ooh, I like that play don't, a lot. Yeah, I don't want sheep in my deck. Uh, and I also had to get rid of a card, so. Okay. Hmm. Well. I'm seven cards ahead of you. Thanks to my good friend Benedictus. I don't think I'm that scared of a water elemental. I think I can just pass. Do you run? Do you do you run cold light? Do I run cold light? I I do not. I I can tell you okay. that because it's that's public. That's public. Yeah information. yeah yeah. Okay. I'll pass them. I don't want you to burn any of my cards. Who knows what secrets will uncover? So I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Because I know you can't. Oh, dear. I can I can afford to do this right now, um, just because I have I have the time to do it. 
Uh, and this is this is actually a threatening board for you. Mm-hmm. It is very threatening. I have to do this, unfortunately. So we'll just go ahead there. Yeah. I cannot deal with that brand though. So you get your bra your brand gets to stick. Yeah, which gets kind of fun. And then I am going to do this. Oh dear. Unfortunately, I low rolled at like the <laughs> worst possible minions in my deck. But I got my full combo back on the um, back on the board. So the only the only way for you to deal with this board is actually um, psychic screen. Because mm. uh, you're it's the only AOE that you have left in your deck is light bomb, or something that you got from my deck. If there was an AOE put into um, put into your deck from me, mm. but even then, like Blizzard doesn't. Like we've already seen Blizzard, uh, he can, you know, Flame Strike isn't going to be able to help you with this. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm happy seeing that. Yeah, it's going to have to be the scream, unfortunately. So suddenly, that Benedictus. I'm 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 sitting pretty good, and that's the the only AOE that you have left in your deck is the um, is the light bomb, which doesn't help too much against a Nazoth board because you need that little bit extra to deal with the Nazoth itself. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, now I'm in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, and this is I mean so. This isn't, you know, the most threatening of Nazoth boards. Like, say that if there was a Sylvanas, it would be a lot different. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because, like, your previous turn forced him to play Scream. Yeah. And, that, and, and, yeah. and that harkens back to, I'm just trying to get you to use your, your, Reese's, your resources less efficiently than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm grinding you out to the point where all I need to do is stick a single board, and then I kind of just coast. This is a this is a yikes turn. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm hand tracking, I know exactly what card that is. I could have popped you lower. I was going to say. I also could have done this first. <laughs> That's okay. At, at the very least. I believe this is what they call in the business BM. <laughs> yeah. I kid. Oh, no. Don't do it. Oh, no. I'll take one of those. Get potion of polymorph. Yeah. I'll, I'll, the 2-2 two -two did its job. I believe this is GG. Yeah. This is, for all we know, you could still have some duplicates in your deck. Hmm. I mean, I got one of those dudes. Um. Oof. Yeah. So that's um. On either another ice block, or that's an ice block, or a potion of polymorph. I mean, I really can't do anything. Yeah. Historically speaking, this is a tough matchup for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this the right way. There we go. My hand is... My hand's still pretty good. I'm going to play that out either way, though. Just in case. Okay, so I can. I'm gonna play play to my outs. Yeah. Even though I'm That's really cool. screwed. <laughs> We're gonna be rich. Such a 
Yeah. No, I, I like that. You had to. Yeah, you have a choice. Yeah, yeah you're, I also, in a, you're, I also, in a, you're in a don't die situation. I also made sure that I checked my arena was glowing yellow because I do have cards from your deck that could be yeah. shared with mine. I'm gonna miss one damage again. Oh dear. Because I'm on autopilot right now. <laughs> I uh, so I, I tend to really like play these particular matchups like really slow, probably almost even to a fault, um, and that's something that you like as you're as you're navigating like a like a very value oriented matchup. It's something you want to be careful about because if you give if you give your opponent like too much time, then you know you might give them an opportunity to get back into the game. So earlier when you were pointing at at cards, yeah, this is exactly what I thought you were talking about. You were you had wanted to Bran and Benedictus, I think. Oh well, no, when I was pointing at cards, I was hoping to Dirty Rat Psychic Scream. Ah, uh, okay. But then it pulled the it pulled the um, what was it? It pulled the Zola and messed up everything. Got it. So I'm. Dealing with the Bran and the Reno there, just because I don't want you to get even more. Um, I, I I can't let a in a value oriented game. It's really really hard to just let an opponent stick a Bran. That's fair. Um, that's fair. So um, you you know you're kind of deck not at not as much because you don't have like some crazy broken brand combo outside of the infinite combo but at this point the infinite combo isn't really going to help you because i have board and i've yeah. exhausted you of all of your removal yeah i'm in a i'm in a world of hurt right now so one thing that one thing that we can consider so like you know say say we wanted to try and you know make the reno dragon build you know like a lot more anti-control. One thing that Slows could consider is, do you ever just put a soft combo, like a soft OTK combo back into your deck? Like, if you remember back in the Wild Ladder Challenge Season 2, um, we saw um, we saw Spiral doing something to that effect. So he ran like a really hard Reno Control Dragon Priest and then included the infinite combo in the list. Mm -hmm. Like he had he had the infinite combo, but he also had things like um like Alex Straza, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. He had Alex Straza, he had Spawn of Shadows. So like his only like Spawn of Shadows damage could really be like 18 damage. But in a lot of these like slower matchups, you know, you get an Emperor tick here or there, you kind of sneak out some extra damage when they're not really expecting it. For sure. So maybe, you know, that could be a, that could be a route that you take, you know, if you were, if you wanted to do something different, you know, in a matchup, in a matchup like this. You know, it's hard because Ice Block, Ice Block's a thing. Uh, so it's like, it's really hard to combo a Reno Mage in particular, but a lot of like the other control decks, Get real. They can get real spooky sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! So that's that should be your last Reno, if I'm counting correctly. Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah. Oh look, who shows up finally? <laughs> My good friend, Shadow Reaper Anduin. <laughs> hey, buddy. Welcome. Hey, to you should you shouldn't have Benedictus to my deck. I know. I just. Yeah. I uh. You, I, I feel like you got you got a little unlucky. Like I had all of the cards that you were trying, you would have been trying to copy from my deck in my hand um, with your Bene like with your Benedictus in particular. So mm -hmm. I got I, I I do admit I I got lucky in that respect uh, this game. I well, did. Well, definitely GGS. Yeah. Wait, that, I, uh, that, that, that was a 35-minute game, so 
Um, you know, again, if this, the, is a, if this is the best of three and it went to three games, you're looking at like, and especially in a tournament setting, you play a lot slower. Um, yeah. some, some of these might go for like two hours. That's crazy. Uh, well, so he, here's here's the thing. So there's already been two um, two wild specialist tournaments uh, that Reno Jackson's hosted. Mm -hmm. The the decks that are doing well are like the mid rangey tempo decks. Like Even Lock is the deck to beat right now in in wild specialist format. So, yeah. and speaking a of, lot of speaking of specialist tournaments, Team One Trick has one coming up too. They do, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say they do. No, they is we. We yeah, do. Yes, they is and we. Um, so you know, um, again, we'll, we'll link that in the description below. But yeah. uh, uh, Team One Trick is hosting a specialist tournament um, on March the thirtieth. Yeah, everyone is welcome. Noon Eastern, yeah. nine Pacific on the NA server. Yeah, everyone's welcome uh, to play. It's gonna yeah, be a there's lot of fun. no limit to the amount of participants. Yeah, and then not only is there a cash prize. Um, to be announced at a later date, before, you know, leading up to the tournament, we gotta save a little bit of the hype for people. Yes. But the top two placing players will get automatic qualification to the Wild Ladder Challenge Season Three. Yeah, and that's that's the big deal. That's the big one. Yeah, because that's, that's a that's a that's like the premier Wild tournament circuit uh, in the world. Yeah, it's very exciting. You, we. we Especially, so like last season, we had people come over to the NA server and build a collection on NA just to play in the tournament. It's it was, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. But thanks for uh, thanks for watching the video, everybody. If yeah. you like what you saw, let us know in the comments. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Um, and if there's a, like a particular video or something that you want to see us make, put that in the comments too, because we're always looking for cool ideas to make videos of things that you guys want to see, because you guys are the reason that we do what we do. For sure. And you can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash team one trick. We've always got deck lists and guides and all sorts of fun stuff. But yeah, EK, until next time. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys next week. See you around.